Hello students, Eugene here and I'm here to talk to you about making a cereal box logo and I want to point out some of the common characteristics and traits of these types of logos. Now they are what you call for the most part word marks. They're, they're words, not, not um, icons or symbols. And I'm going to point out to you what I want you to do that uh, is going to require some technique on your part. And everyone's supposed to do the same thing with this particular logo. I understand there are brands out there, like if we scroll down as to what you're looking at right here, say like uh, Hosted Flakes right there, or Grape Huts, um, these... Uh, Greedos right there, Vader Flakes, basically Raisin Han. Um, these are not the types of titles I'm looking for that are just straight up, just type typed out on a baseline. Not going for that. We're going for the uh, for a bunch of characteristics that are super common, more common than not. And you'll see as I build a logo. I could point them out, but you're going to see them here in a minute anyway. So what I did. And this could change based on what semester it is, but I provided some fonts in here. So if you click on serialfonts.zip, um, I gave you a bunch of fonts, and here they are. Now, these are not the best fonts in the world. There are a bunch of them. That you, there's a bunch of other stuff you can access online. These are just some I got for you, but... This particular one, <laughs> Ballpark Wiener, looks just like the Kellogg's um, script that uh, you see in a lot of cereal boxes. And there's another one like it. Uh, a, lot, a, a lot of these, it, yeah, it's this, another shabby sort of does the same thing. So I'm going to use Ballpark Wiener and um, Grow Bold for my title, which is going to be uh, a, a spoof I'm thinking about doing called um, He Brand. So the attorney is He Brand. So what I'll do is I'll type this out. Of course, I'll make this bigger. And Eternia's is going to be that ballpark, which I just installed. There it is. Looks like that. And then Hebran is going to be that font called Grow Bold. Okay. So it doesn't look exactly like... Uh, the he brand there's something to point out raisin brand okay so he brand i knew it was going to be a problem right off the bat because raisin brand has a lot more characters in it so i'm going to have to do an invert on the logo basically it's going to be backwards from what it usually is i'm going to make he smaller and brand bigger so i'm going to invert the whole idea of the logo but I'll still put Eternia as kind of in the same spot as you're seeing over there with um, Iron Brand. So let me point out some of these things I told you I was going to point out to you. And one is um, you'll see double and triple strokes around these and then this kind of containing box that can that covers all these. So let's go ahead and just build it, right? There is a dash in, in He Brand or like He Man's name that goes like that. But I'm just going to say forget it for now. No, I'll put it in there. Okay, I'm going to drop that down to the next line. And uh, then I have to make a decision. Lowercase or all uppercase? Well, it looks like over here like we've got some lowercase stuff going on. So, um, But if you look at the bottom here where Bran is, Bran is what's called, it's a capital B and then a, a lowercase R-A-N. So these, these are called small caps, is what they're called. So uh, the benefit of the small caps is that they're the same thickness as the all caps. So I'm going to have to fake it because I, I, I'm sure there aren't members of this family that are going to work with me. But, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm going to make it work. So uh, here we go. I'm just going to make a copy. I always make a copy um, so that I can go back and remember what fonts I used even if I even if they don't load on whatever computer I'm on it'll still tell me the name of them so that's why I do it that way but I'll focus on this and right click and create outlines 
then blow this up. Now you just ungroup everything. And Eternia's I don't have to do much with. It can all stay on the same baseline. I see some room for improvement here, but not a whole lot. You know, if I wanted to nitpick, I could try to make all this stuff real pretty where all this stuff is happening, where all these connect. But I can live with them. You know what I'm saying? I can live with it. In fact, I might connect this and just see. Yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm not going for perfection. Let me just say, let me just take and group all that. In fact, even better, before I even group it, I'm just going to go over here and hold down the alt key and unite everything so basically it's all been united into one guy right there um, I just undid that because I wanted to expand it but it's not showing me the expand button what is going on here let me click that again okay this is really weird actually Let me release this. Use a shape builder and just combine everything this way. Because I have no idea what's happening here. I'm tired of this. I I just want to connect all these. I press Shift M to access the shape builder, which we've talked about in class, and now we've got uh, a more complete guy here. Now it's not all going to be one complete guy. If I press, if I alt click this, I should see expand pop up, but I'm not. This is something new that they changed. I think this happened to me already in some of the videos that I made. I apologize. I have no idea what that's about. If I go to my layers panel, as you can see, uh, Eternia is here. Is broken up. This is one solid piece, and these are separate pieces right here. And what I want to do is I want to make them all one piece. And they don't want to cooperate. And what I've always done in the past is use the Pathfinder panel, not the Pattern panel, but the Pathfinder panel, which is out here by default. Hover over this, see where it says Alt-Click to create a compound shape. Watch over here. They'll, they'll all turn into one shape. I'll press Alt and I'll click. And then you can click Expand. For some reason, the Properties panel wasn't showing me Expand. Or if it did, I missed it. All right, sorry that was annoying. But since I'm getting nitpicky anyways, this video seems like it's going to take longer than I want. Whatever. Uh, if you want to clean this stuff up, if it's bothering you, it's not too hard to do. You just go in there, you select it, Grab the pencil tool. The pencil tool will be your friend here. Right? So here's the pencil tool. And then uh, you go within 12 pixels. You can edit select the pixels. And you just drag across there. And you can straighten that stuff out. That nice? You'll have to press undo all the time. But whatever. Not that big of a deal. As you can see, this is a nice easy way to clean things up. If you're trying to really make this look, you know, magnifique. Or magnifique, I should say. Sorry. I know I sound like a lunatic. It's late at night. I'm making this video. I'm mad that Illustrator didn't behave properly. Maybe me look flaky. All right. Uh, so here we go. Eternia's He Brand. So what's going to happen here? Well, this is where we start to have a little bit of fun. Um, and it, I'm going to deviate from what we're seeing over here a little bit. This is some of the trick with uh, these logos. Now you'll notice with Groot Loops and Captain Crunch and Gamma Smacks that not, none of these letters are sitting on the baseline. So we're just going to play around with that concept. I'm going to make he a little bigger. Make this dash a little bigger, okay, like that. And I'm going to rotate he a little bit like that. Rotate the e a little bit like that. Just make some little kind of kind of little quirky adjustments to this. Nothing too crazy, but something that's going to add a little bit of personality here. So these are not sitting on the same baseline, and there's a little bit of playfulness happening right here. Then I'll take brand, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. 
that key could be a little smaller or the E could be I mean I should say and make sure I, I think about logos when I make this stuff I'm gonna leave a decent amount of space between these or and, and, and if they did overlap I have a trick for that um, where I just cut things out well, well we'll talk about that in a minute uh, this logo doesn't need to do that so brand is gonna be bigger on the bottom um, but let's mess with the baseline first so We'll take the R down and we'll rotate it back. In fact, I'm just going to rotate the B forward a little bit. The R back a little bit. The A kind of would naturally flow into the R like that. That works pretty good. And the N, I don't really have to do much with, but I'll do a little bit of a rotation on it. There we go. That's fun. Then we'll center this up. And right here, I can tell we're going to have a little bit of interaction between these two that... Uh, that would require some modification. Now this doesn't have to center up perfectly. But I want it to, to look pretty darn good. Alright, so see where that overlap is happening. I'll, I'll show you what I do in cases like this. If they're going to overlap, I make sure they overlap really well. Um, so, I don't know if I want to do that with this one. Because I think it will look a little hokey. This is not that bad. I think I'd rather the H overlap over here than the E. Watch this. I'm going to pick this up. Just me being picky. Bring this down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. So this is the spot I want to work with right here. Watch this. I'm going to make this guy a different color. Send him to the back. And I'm going to do this the easy way. I'm just going to use the pen tool and go like that. And we're just going to cut that piece out right there on the B. Just like that. Shift M, Shape Builder, and then just cut that out. Then it just looks like the H is cutting into this. And I'll press the I key and go reselect this black, and you can see what I mean. Super common stuff we're seeing right there. Uh, and I'm going to play with this a little bit. I, I really didn't need to play with it at all. I'm just goof it off. I'll just leave it alone. Just to take it back to where it was. It was fine. Okay, so um, any overlap that's going on in there, you can use that trick to, to help you out. Um, you don't have to do it that way. It's just how I choose to do it. So Eternia's is going to be a lot smaller, so I'm going to shrink that down. And it doesn't have a descending Y like Tony's does right there. So I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so check that out. It's looking pretty cereal boxy, right? Kind of fun. All right, so what's next? Well, what's next is dealing with this shape on the outside that most of these have. See it on Loki and with Iron Brand. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to select this guy. And you know what? I'll select Eternia at the same time. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna hold down Alt, make a copy. Go over here to the Pathfinder. Alt click, unite, and then press expand. Now this becomes like I showed you before. This actually just became one layer all by itself. See that? And here's where the big trick is. We go to Object, Path, and Offset Path, and check out what it does there. 10 pixels is fine um, based off the size I have right here. I'm going to press OK. Now I've got all these little ugly holes in there. I'm going to fill all those. I'm just going to draw a few shapes to fill those in because I really don't want to see those at all. I'm just getting rid of all of them. Then I'll select everything all over again and Alt click, Unite, and then press Expand. And again, and now it's just one big piece. And if you still have a few holes, um, you can use the blob brush and just paint them in like I did right here. You know, that, 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 that'd be perfectly fine. That'll work. See? Now there's nothing left. So what you have is this pretty cool shape to work with. You might need to make a few tweaks like I am here. Like here's the pencil tool and that, that spot looks weird right there. So there we go. I fixed that go in and touch things up but the the short story is if I were to make this background uh, 
let me make it a a white with a black stroke for right now. So I'm just trying to stick with black and white at the moment. Black stroke. Yeah, there we go. And I'll thicken that up. And I'll set that stroke to the outside. Because I don't want it impeding on the letter, letter form. And I'll shove this in here and check it out. Looks pretty cool, right? I'm just going to put it in place. I am noticing a problem right there. You see that? That stroke revealed it. Not sure what that is. What is going on right there? This is going to bother me, isn't it? I knew it. Uh, let me start subtracting anchors and figuring out what's going on there. Press Control Y. I can go in there and look. I can see no logical reason for that to be there. This is, this guy is aligned to the on the inside. He looks good. All right. So why are you flaking out on the outside? Well, I don't like that on the inside. That's not what I want. I want it on the uh, but I'm going to leave it there for right now. It's something I could go in and try and solve, but it's it's not worth our time taking up this video. All right. So I'm noticing something I already don't like that I kind of thoughtlessly did, and that's the fact that Eternia's is not really centered. I mean. I kind of just eyeballed it. And I don't like this weird gap that got created right here. So I'm kind of unhappy with some stuff that I just did. Let me uh, make a, well, a hillbilly solution right here. Not that hillbillies are bad. Shouldn't be saying hillbilly on this video. Sorry. But let me just combine all that. Okay. There we go. I don't love this, but it is what it is. I'm going to do a little scoop like that right there. I got to do it better. Yeah, that, I mean, that's okay. I can live with that. I sort of hate it. I got to be honest with you, but I'm, I'm not going to mess with that area anymore because I got to keep this video moving. So let's grab this guy and we'll go with that bright red. Okay. Boom. Isn't that nice? Now, normally you've got like extra strokes on here. I'm going to make a suggestion. I would suggest just going with a dark red stroke on that. I think that looks pretty cool. Black strokes, don't you? Oh, don't overuse those. A lot of people, they just overdo that. They go nuts with those sorts of strokes. All right. So for he brand, I don't know what color this box is going to be. I'm just going to pick a random color. But uh, when you think about He-Man, his colors are like red and brown. So why don't I just choose a brown? Um, well, why not? Uh, so I'm going to go find myself a kind of a fun brown. Mix it up. There it is. Probably take that brown. In fact, let me select all these and press group. All of them. Control G for a group. And then I want a dark stroke around here. An additional dark stroke uh, for the color for this particular stroke. Why don't I use um, the same? I don't know. I'll just pick a red. I was gonna pick the same red, but whatever. I'll set that to the outside and hope that it doesn't cause any drama for me. And I don't like it. Figures, right? So I'll go with a lighter brown on the inside. In fact, I'll go with more of a skin tone. Why not? He man had that crazy tan. Why not try it? Yeah, it's starting to work. It's starting to be kind of funny. You have to imagine the color of this box. Now, I could apply gradients and do all types of madness right now, but this this is meeting some of those minimum requirements. I do wish that there was uh, some sort of a descender right here. Um, I've got some ideas as to what to do, because I, I could put a tail on something pretty easily. Uh, like this S right here, for example, I could just kind of 
keep this going and looping around like this. And this would take a minute to build, but uh, it could look pretty cool. But that, this is stuff I should have done beforehand. But honestly, I just wing it in these videos the same way I do in the classroom, you know, for the sake of time. And also, I kind of like the fact that you get to experience the real... Th Let's say I spent like three hours making this video and you only got to see 45 min minutes of it. You know, I'm kind of lying to you. I'm making it look easier than it is. And that's not what I want to do. Look at the top of that E. Something he got that E got butchered somehow. But whatever. I'm not going to add that swash on there right now. But I think that that's what I would that I, I would do if I were stuck with this thing. Notice I didn't do this inside of the template. That wasn't on purpose necessarily. But you can't build these things separate like this. I mean, it's it's not the end of the world. So here's another thing you can do. Uh, you can also go to you can keep doing this object path offset path. I mean, if you wanted to, you could do a negative offset. And you could put a little something on the inside right there like I just did. Now you have to ungroup it afterwards and go find and figure out what you just did. But it works pretty good, as you can see right there. Um, maybe maybe I'll pick a, a lighter color. You know, I don't know. That's not too bad. Let me press I, the I key and go select that. But you see how this is really kind of changing the personality of this guy. Uh, it wasn't a whole lot of work. There's some tools in here that could help you simplify this too. If you didn't like all those squared edges, for example, you could maybe go try an effect like... Uh, what is that? Effect stylized and rounded corners. This is a pretty crazy effect, but look at that. It'll actually round off all the corners for you. If you didn't if you wanted them to be, which I think is amazing. And then you can go to object and expand appearance and that looks pretty that looks pretty good, you know. I'm not saying it looks like amazing or anything, but th this is looking kind of fun and charismatic to me. I like it. So, uh another thing you can do before or after as you're working with these. By the way, let me just shove a color in the background just so you can have a little bit of a sense of how this is turning out. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with Hebran. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely being led by Iron Brand over there and I'm trying to stop letting it influence me because it's having a strong influence. In fact, let's just go with like a gray tone or something like that. I don't know. We, we could do something Castle Grayskull-ish here. If you're not a fan of He-Man, sorry. I'm just product of the 80s and having a midlife crisis or something. I don't know. But uh, back to this guy and what I actually came here to talk about. Um, to trying to wrap this video up. Well, Basically, we did everything, but if you select all this, except for that background, of course, and you make it a group, you could do this at any stage, but, you know, it's kind of fun to use an envelope to store, like a, a make with warp. Now, don't do anything too extreme, but you could do something really subtle and experiment with it a little bit. This should be changing the effect right there. Okay, there we go. Like, you see how Hebron got wider at the bottom? That's not too bad. You know, you could have some fun with it. Yeah, that that looks dumb. Um, let me, I always like squeeze for some reason. I think squeeze is a cool effect. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. Maybe that'll be fun. Honestly, I don't like it because it got too tall. This, this guy's too tall already, so. I'm not in love with anything I've seen so far. But like, I, like you see here, you can kind of dance back and forth and figure out uh, the right move for you. I think th this is kind of cool. I'm going to press OK. Then I think I'm just going to shrink the whole thing down. Which, this is not something I normally do. I'm not big on warping type. But I just wanted to look at it. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it completely. 
maybe just a little bit of a subtle change right there. And it, this isn't too bad. You know, this this is a concept. Um, this is something I have to revise over and over again. But what does it have? It's got double and triple strokes. It's got that little shape back behind everything. At the end of the day, I could go over this and add a bunch of gradients, which I'm not going to do right now. But, but this is what I'm talking about. This is the type of work I want you to put into these cereal box logos. And I hope that it makes sense. And I'm sorry this video is so long, but it is what it is. Enjoy. Enjoy making your logo. I'm sure you'll have fun. Make sure that you model it after an existing cereal brand. And uh, realize it's not going to look exactly like it. You're not going to have the exact same font. It's not going to be the exact same thing. But try to follow some of the, what I call tropes or common characteristics, which are double and triple strokes. Um playful typefaces that are kind of jumbled together that they're, they're big they're fat they're bold and this extra shape that gets drawn behind them that kind of keeps them inside of a nice little container and also overlap is a good idea you don't have to overlap like this either you could just use a stroke but overlaps fun you know you think about the characters being children that are just misbehaving it just it's just a good way to think about the letters and and that's what i mean by playful and whimsical all right, I'm going to stop talking before I keep talking. So thanks for listening. Have a good one. Contact me if you have any questions. Bye.